Welcome to our webinar, Apricot Reimplementation, when to consider it and what it looks like. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Carrie Stevens. I'm an Apricot Software Consultant at Sidekick Solutions. Sidekick Solutions is a consulting firm specializing in social solutions Apricot software and is a leading provider of Apricot customization and support services. We are a social solutions certified implementation partner and all of our consultants are gold certified Apricot administrators. We're a remote team serving clients across the US and Canada, and we're proud to work with nonprofits, collaboratives, and public sector organizations, large and small. I'm presenting today from Durham, North Carolina, where I live and work. If you chose to watch this video, you may be struggling with significant workflow and reporting challenges in your Apricot database. You might be examining if Apricot is the right fit for your organization. It may be that you need training or consulting support and cleanup, or you might need a full re-implementation. A re-implementation may sound daunting. The goal of this video is to equip you with knowledge about re-implementation so that you can make an informed decision about a path forward. During this video, we will cover what to expect from your Apricot database, when to consider re-implementing in your Apricot, including the top 10 signs you may need to re-implement, what a re-implementation project looks like, and several approaches unique to re-implementation projects. Let's start by reviewing what you should expect from your Apricot database. Social Solutions Apricot Core and 360 software is an online database software designed specifically for nonprofits to track and report on a variety of data sets, including clients, programs, services, outcomes, volunteers, and more. Apricot is a fundamentally flexible and scalable platform. You can configure Apricot to match your organization's specific workflow, program model, and reporting requirements, saving you time on service delivery, data management and reporting, and maximizing the return on investment of the tool. Your Apricot database should provide users with a logical set of data entry and navigation steps where the data can be reported on using Apricot's reporting tool. You want it to be robust yet streamlined and efficient. What do you do if your current design isn't getting you these things? You might want to consider a re-implementation. So what do we mean by re-implementation? Re-implementation is the process of designing and implementing a new set of data entry forms to match your organization's unique workflow, program model, and reporting needs. There are several indicators of a system redesign need. Here are the top 10. Number one, an inability to generate key reports not due to a training barrier. This oftentimes is the result of linking issues or missing fields. Number two, duplicative data entry, logging the same data in several different locations throughout the system, so not knowing which data is the most current or accurate information. Number three, extraneous forms and fields, collecting data that you aren't really using, usually a result of outdated forms or a one-to-one -one paper form translation. Number four, confusing workflow, navigation with lots of clicks or feeling like you're bouncing around the system. Number five, relying on external tools or systems to fill gaps. With any software, there are limitations, but Apricot is pretty robust. So if you feel like you're piecing things together that you should be able to do in Apricot, you likely could benefit from a system assessment. Number six, independent form sets for each of your programs. A good data design uses shared forms wherever possible, and this facilitates cross-program reporting on participants served, demographics, service counts, outcomes, etc. It's a more scalable structure and also helps to standardize SAF development and training. Number seven, a flat rather than a dynamic or a relational design. So this often looks like repeating fields in forms. A dynamic model pulls those unique fields onto a separate linked form to allow for flexibility in record creation 
and to facilitate reporting on those fields by simplifying them to a single field reference rather than multiple. Number eight, undefined or overestablished relationships between related forms. Linking fields in Apricot connects unassociated forms, and this allows users to correlate those linked records in reports. So if you're missing links, the reporting tool will attempt to establish that relationship for you, which can yield an incorrect pairing of the data in the report rows, or sometimes duplicate rows. Number nine, messy or inconsistent data from non-standardized fields. This is usually a result of open entry text fields where there could be preset pick lists, like for service provided, goal category, or exit reason. And number 10, changes to your organization's priorities, programs, or reporting requirements since the initial system implementation. So if any of these ring true in your Apricot database, what should you do next? Switching from one software system to another can be time consuming and expensive. So you may have decided that the resources required to research market options, purchase and customize a new system, and then onboard your staff to the new platform is not your preferred route in solving your database challenges. So the good news is that the solution may lie within your current platform. As we previously discussed, Apricot Core and 360 are highly flexible products and offer the tools for customization without the need for a developer. To be sure that a re-implementation is right for your organization, let's cover the project steps and requirements. There are four primary phases to a re-implementation project, assessment, implementation, deployment, and maintenance. We'll review each phase in more detail now. Phase one, assessment. If you think you may need a re-implementation, start with an assessment. It's important to be confident that a re-implementation is the best route for your organization, all costs and benefits considered. We recommend finding a consultant for expert advice on your best next steps. Sidekick Solutions starts all re-implementation and system optimization projects with an assessment, and we call this assessment a discovery and spec. To do this, we start with an assessment of your current system to identify organizational priorities and reporting requirements. We document your user feedback and pain points and uncover configuration gaps and structural issues with your current design. Then we develop two blueprints, what your system looks like now and what your system could look like in a vision state relative to your requirements. The goal of an assessment is to compare these two blueprints, line them up side by side, and the differences between the two blueprints highlight how to make a transition via re-implementation and the specific recommendations to get you there. Phase two, implementation. If it's determined that a re-implementation is the best course of action, you would then move to phase two. This phase is broken into three steps. Blueprinting. This is where we document submissions and interview style requirements gathering process driven by your workflow and reporting priorities. We synthesize the information from discovery into your new system design all the way down to the field level. Any impact to the existing forms in your system would be clearly documented. Next, we'd move into configuration, and this is the configuration of the forms the features and workflow tools. So in Apricot 360 and Core, this might include referrals tool, workflow, intake, or connect. And then lastly, we move into testing and review. This is your organization's opportunity to preview and test the new system to ensure it meets the requirements. This is also where we fine tune the system before launching. Phase three, deployment. Following implementation, you will complete go live planning, set a go live date, and begin user development and onboarding, which may include training, user guides, and QA sessions. This is oftentimes where data migration might occur if you choose to go to the data migration route. Phase four, maintenance. 
Post Go Live, we recommend transitioning into a bridge technical assistance project to support with report development. So this would be your new reports and rebuilds of existing reports. Continued data migration. And then ongoing system refinements, potentially phase two build outs and technical support. Understanding the steps of a re-implementation project may lead to questions around time, resource, and competency requirements. You may be asking what is required of your organization to ensure a successful project, and what is the time involvement? The following competencies are key to a successful project. Technical expertise, program knowledge, project management, and staff resources. So this is a one-to-one -one time commitment with the project lead. In the example of working with consultants, we do not expect our clients to take on the technical details of apricot design and configuration, but we do expect our clients to know their programs, service delivery models, operational procedures, and reporting requirements. So we collaborate with you to merge our understanding of apricot's technical capabilities with your understanding of your organization's operational models then drive the end result with seasoned project management. The timeline for an implementation project depends largely on scope or the number of programs, the design and implementation approach, which we'll talk about here shortly, key operational deadlines, and the availability of the entire project team. Projects typically average around three to six months. The scope and scale of your re-implementation project is determined by a number of factors. These decisions are determined by your priorities and the outcomes of the assessment. Let's look through those decision points. Re-implementations require a few special considerations since work is being done within a live system that contains real data and active users. There are two approaches in regards to system deployment, linear and phased. The linear approach is the simultaneous implementation of all scoped programs. The phased approach is where you implement similar programs in batches over multiple iterations. The benefits of a linear approach are that you can onboard all staff at the same time rather than a split system usage. This may facilitate adoption. Also, system adjustments identified during build and testing can be reviewed and addressed holistically across all programs. In other words, asking the question, how will this change impact the rest of the system? The benefits of the phased approach is that the system could be launched more quickly for priority programs. Staff onboarding could be done in phases, which may increase manageability. There is an opportunity to learn about lessons and improve the implementation methods with each iteration. And lastly, shorter engagement terms are required of project stakeholders. So we typically recommend using the linear approach for small to medium sized implementations and a phased approach for larger implementations. There are two design approaches when implementing in an active system, each with implications around handling data within the existing framework and managing the user transition to a new system. These two approaches are independent and overlay. An independent build is the configuration of your new form structure independent of the existing forum structure. In other words, all current forums will be slated for archive and users would move to the new form structure upon system rollout. An overlay build is the configuration of your new form structure over top or within the existing form structure. Benefits of the independent build approach is that there's no impact to your end users during configuration. You also have cleaner forms and a de decreased project risk and scope. 
benefits of an overlay build is that you might be able to continue using some of the existing reports in your system. If a data migration is desired, it might decrease the scope since some of the data may remain in the same place. And then if a data migration is not required, the data archived in place is more easily accessible to your end users. Generally, the independent build approach is used if the new form structure is significantly different from the original form structure. And the overlay approach is favorable if the current system design has good bones, meaning that the current form structure generally supports your needs, but modifications to the existing forms and new forms are required. Your system design team will be able to help you determine which approach is the best fit based on the information gathered in the assessment and discovery phases of the project, weighing out the amount of change in the forms as well as your data migration preferences. Now let's talk about data migration options. Migrating your historical data into a new form structure is beneficial because it keeps all of your data together in one contiguous location for clean reporting. On the other hand, data migration projects can be large, require a lot of cleanup, and can take time. Fortunately, the scope of data migration falls on a continuum, so there are options in between. It's important to note that your data will never go away. You will have access to it. So what we're talking about here is where the historical data will be found in both forms and reports. So on one end of the spectrum is fresh start or archive in place. And this just means that there's no data migration. There's a rollover to the new structure. And this is best done at the fiscal year or reporting period break so that you can use prior reports for your historical reporting and then new reports for future reporting. On the migration side of things, you can have a partial or a full migration. An example of a partial data migration would be migrating only those active participants and their associated data. So the fresh start approach is cost and time saving. It could also allow your organization to move away from poor data quality that might exist in your historical data. But again, the primary benefit of a migration is continuity of data. Your historical data is available to end users and you're able to report on historical data in the new reports. Your system design team will be able to help you weigh the options and determine the best fit for your organization. Apricot Core and 360 are flexible and customizable. A well-designed system should align with your organization's workflow, program models, and reporting requirements. Navigation and reporting pain points may be indicators of a need for a system redesign. Re-implementing within your current system may save on time, money, and end-user training. Re-implementation projects can be a complex and have unique considerations. Standardized methodology and expert guidance are available. Start with an assessment. I hope you found this video helpful. To learn more about Apricot, you can explore our YouTube channel or visit our website. If you like our approach to Apricot and would like to work with us, send an email to info at sidekicksolutionsllc.com. We would love to learn more about your organization and your Apricot to see if working together in a consulting engagement might be a good fit. Our door is always open. Thank you.